I'm Dave Hook, President and Founder of Plain Hook Aviation Services. We specialize in developing effective, low-cost security solutions for our general aviation community. Today let's take a look at how to further enhance the physical security at your airport when the basic elements of SEPTED have been maximized. In Crime Prevention Through Environmental Design, or SEPTED, we make use of three strategies to improve the security environment, natural surveillance, natural access control, and territorial reinforcement. SEPTED tends to be most effective when there is a population of good guys or normal users who serve as two-legged reprogrammable multiple sensor security assets typically with a communications package. In other words, a human being who knows, understands, and is willing to participate in the airport security program and either has a cell phone, can quickly gain access to a telephone, or some other means of communication. But what happens when the weather's bad, or it's late at night, or avgas costs too much for the normal users of the airport to show up for their regular dose of flying? What then? What we want to do with these technologies is push the detection of the abnormal user as far away from our critical assets as we can, as well as improve the assessment of these detections to help keep the false alarm rate down. Next, we want to employ delaying mechanisms and environments near our assets as well as improving the response time for local law enforcement. We want to leave some evidence of our newly enhanced security as a form of deterrent. And finally, we need to make sure that the technologies we employ meet any legal requirements. So before you whip out that checkbook or credit card and start buying everything that the security vendor wants to sell you, Remember, your security equipment should supplement, not replace, a good SEPTED-based security program. Now let me ask you a couple of questions. Do you know the common vehicle and foot traffic flows at your airport? Next, where are the bottlenecks to these traffic flows? And are there alternate means of approaching and gaining access to the consequential assets at your airport? Answering these questions will help you in selecting the scenes to cover using complementary lighting and closed circuit television systems. Matching light sources to CCTV performance characteristics is critical in obtaining the type of images needed to assess an intruder. For more information on this, listen to Plainhook's free webcasts, numbers 5 and 6, on lighting and closed circuit television performance. Next, do you know when people are normally at the locations at your airport where they can observe those normal and alternate approaches to those assets you want to protect? Also, is the presence subject to the time of the year, local weather, holidays, and special events at your airport? Bottom line, when can you reasonably expect someone will be there and when can you not? This is important because it defines the operating environment that your electronic sensors should be able to operate, and these then become the performance requirements for the supplementing security technologies. Another important consideration involves aircraft ground operations. Do these choke points involve aircraft taxi routes? This is especially important when considering the route is in one of these scenes where you plan to have security lighting and closed circuit television scene illumination. Lights that are motion activated are good for conserving electricity, but the sudden illumination of a light may startle a pilot taxiing at night and possibly cause a night taxi accident. Now let's talk about improving detection of intrusions. In pushing the detection perimeter out electronically, there are some different ways to employ security devices. First, you can decide between above ground and below ground detection systems. Be aware of their strengths and weaknesses. For example, use of a seismic detection wire on a fence can provide false alarms if the fence isn't sufficiently tight and vibrates in the wind. Second, you can decide between point and volumetric detection systems. Some point detection systems are based upon breaking a visible or infrared beam of light. Think of these systems as being two-dimensional. These have the limitation of being less effective when there are atmospheric obscurance, such as fog or smoke. 
volumetric sensors determine if someone or something has entered an area. Think of these as three-dimensional sensors. Commonly used volumetric sensors are passive infrared and microwave. Passive IR has limitations based upon the sensitivity of the lens to differentiate temperature changes based upon the general background temperature it sees. Microwave sensors tend to be sensitive to scintillating sources that move through its field of vision, such as water runoff after a rain shower. These strengths and weaknesses make some sensors better used for exterior or outdoor use, while others tend to be more effective indoors. Now let's briefly consider increasing delay time. You'll want to increase the delay time the abnormal user requires by employing various devices relatively near the assets to protect. Why near the asset, you may ask? Because you want local law enforcement to know generally where the bad guys will be, rather than having to search for them all over your airport. This simplifies the interdiction process and increases the probability of law enforcement success. Next, you want to reduce local law enforcement response time. Simply put, you want to find ways to reduce their travel distance, increase their travel speed, improve their ease of access onto the airport and at or near the assets of consequence. The faster law enforcement can be in position to interdict the bad guys, the less investment is needed in delaying technologies at or near the assets. As an example, gates and locks that are intended for use by law enforcement only can help give them a reduced distance to travel and you a quicker response time. Now give the bad guys something to sweat about. If thieves and terrorists know that there are closed-circuit television cameras and security lights installed at the airport but they don't know where all of them are, that's a form of deterrence. They'll start looking for an easier target than your airport. So here are some pointers. First, Closely control who knows what your security cameras can and cannot see, what your detection systems can and cannot detect, and what the average law enforcement response time is. Second, if your surveillance plan allows for it, have one of your closed circuit television camera and security lighting systems in plain sight for the general public to see, but make it difficult for outsiders to determine where the rest of your CCTV systems are located. Next, post signs on the perimeter which state that entrance onto the airport implies consent to video monitoring. Make the bad guys sweat. Finally, don't forget the law. Ensure your security systems and overall program comply with local, county or parish, state and federal laws and regulations, and make sure that you contact your insurance provider to discuss what they can do for you in terms of reducing policy premiums, increasing coverage, and reducing deductibles for your security efforts because you are reducing their exposure. Get some return on investment for your trouble. We're proud to share our low-cost security solutions with our general aviation community. You see, for us here at Planehook, this is our passion, developing effective low-cost security solutions that help protect your freedom to fly. So call us here at Planehook at Country Code 1, Area Code 210-653-8442, or email us at planehook at hotmail.com. From all of us here at Planehook, fly safe and be secure.